Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. Uh, this is a very active day here in the markets, folks. I wanted to go through what happened um, yesterday because I think a uh, day before yesterday, I was gone uh, yesterday. I had to uh, do some family stuff. Uh, but if you'll notice, this was our market here on Tuesday when we got up to that uh, we went higher than our, remember, our 13,960 level that was uh, the ABCD. We went up to 13,976, and that's how we did that. And then the market started to back off. It had one small 382 retracement and dropped 300 points, folks, yesterday into the exact 382. And at that point, we were short the S&P, and I said we should be covering that down here at this level of 41 uh, 29 and we did and we sold it back on the 382 retracement at 4157 and we are still short now something really important is possibly happening in the market today and I want to bring it to your attention I'm not sure the importance of it but if you're going to believe in Gartley patterns and things like that you could take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average because as you can see here we have made a perfect ABCD at the 61% retracement. We have rallied about 80 to 100 points off that bottom so far. This was also brought to our attention by our good friends over there across the pond there in London. And I want to show you what the four-hour chart looks like on that because you'll be seeing the same type of pattern that is lining up there that we just saw on the daily. Now, remember, these patterns do fail. But let's get back to the point at hand okay because i i watch markets intraday because they how they react intraday is how they react daily if you'll remember on that nasdaq i pointed out the fact that we were going to have uh, what we thought would be a pretty good correction to the downside so here is what has happened so far now this is the increase uh, of about 30 points in the nasdaq on this weekly chart taking us up almost You'll see the level right in here, almost at 14,000. You can see there's the number written right there, 14,000. So what I do, and I'm not trading this, folks. I, I trade I trade the S&P. I don't trade the NASDAQ for that reason. <laughs> Things jump, across, jump around quite a bit. So here's where we are in the NASDAQ today. Now, I want to... The reason why I'm going to go through this, I had a discussion from somebody uh, at uh, who as a TFNN listener actually called me today and uh, wanted to argue with me about something that I really didn't know anything about, but it just didn't make any sense. And I'll go through that in just a minute. Now, this is the NASDAQ. You can see here's the after the close. Uh, this is the, uh, the gap up that started the whole thing in the NASDAQ futures. Okay, now you can see the NASDAQ futures jumped up quite a bit and went sideways for quite a bit okay all right now let's take a look at what happened let's take a look what happened with the uh, Nvidia the stock itself okay this is where I had the problem because the guy said well there was there was selling all the way up there and I said whoa I said just a minute boys and girls I can tell you one thing the dudes that are in this are not stupid enough to be scale selling all this way up here. To me, this is all bids. In other words, they're bidding it from 285, 290, 295, 305, 310, 315, all the way up to the top. And then it starts to trade up in here. But I, you know, I'm not a stock guy. So I, I, the first person I should have called was Basil because I, he, I know he knows the answer to that. 
and I'm sure Tom O'Brien does too, but I don't. I just don't think there's anybody that's out there that's going to be had to have scale selling into something like that. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, but you can see what's happened. And then when you listen to the pundits on uh, Bloomberg and TFNN, <laughs> Bloomberg and CNBC, you know, this is this is the messiah. This is this this is the uh, this is the thing that's going to take us to the promised land, and maybe it is. Remember, Al Apple did that with the iPhone, so uh, we've got to pay very, very close attention to that because I am not trading this. I am just watching this. I'm watching the market in the constant context of what the market is doing as as it's moving around. Now, if you look at the Dow Jones, you can see that we've just been coming down for quite a while, and we did make a a, a pattern here. Uh, of a Gartley pattern, of course. Now remember, there's four four parts of this market. We have the S&P, we have the Dow Jones, we have the NASDAQ, and we have the Russell. And just look at the Russell, folks. Here's where we were yesterday with the Russell. I want to get this up here and show you where we were. And if you'll notice, the uh, Russell was making the, excuse me, this is Tuesday. This is because I was gone yesterday. There's where we were exactly at the 3A2. So what we want to do now is to see if the Russell is doing uh, what we think it's going to be doing. In, in other words, be rallying quite a bit. And unfortunately, that is not what's happening. So this is only a few stocks that are doing this. So, you know, that's what you have to be really super careful about. Uh, there you can see we had to sell off. And we've, uh, this is recently, just a few minutes ago, I marked that up to, to see where we are. So that's what I'm looking at. Now, I'm not looking right now what the what the, um, the NASDAQ is doing, but by looking at that same pattern that we looked at the other day, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be doing something like this. And this is the one I just posted before to show you that this is much more easier to trade than the, uh, than that, the, the NVIDIA. But you can see we have a legitimate A, B, C, D, and where does it measure to? 14,000. But remember, our original premise was it was not going to get any higher than 13,960. Well, we're 40 points higher. Boys and girls, 40 points higher in, a, in something that's trading at 13,960 when one of those stocks went 27%. Now, 27% on a $5 stock is a couple of bucks, right? 27% on a $300 stock is almost $100. I mean, that's a lot of money. And when it's price weighted like it is, you can see why, why this thing is going crazy. I'm surprised that the, uh, uh, well, the NASDAQ's up uh, 200, I think, but the, I'm surprised that the S&P's not up uh, uh, 80 or something like that. And the only high, it's only went right up to just a little above the 382. I haven't checked it recently, but that's this is why it's such a, such a really critical day uh, as, as we look at this because it's, it's super important because these indexes are highly sensitive to the news that's going on. And one of the things in the news, of course, of great importance is whether this debt thing, ceiling thing is going to be changed. And anybody that thinks that we're going to default is not being – we might default for two weeks, but we're not going to default forever. I mean, this is this is that would be the end of it if it did that. So let's uh, – Let's take a break here, 877-927-6648. Keep those cards and letters coming in, and we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted 
Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, we're back, and I posted the chart here from uh, where we were on Tuesday for the 382 retracement in the silver at uh, 2292. And uh, I said on our video last night that I sent out we want to be a buyer of silver at 22.92, risking 10 cents, and uh, we bought it at 22.92, and it rallied all the way up to uh, 23.20, um, almost uh, $2,000, and uh, then it came back and made a new low at 23.91, and I said uh, when I put the trade on and sent this corresponding video out is that if the market gets back to your break-even point after making that kind of money, you don't want to take the risk. And the reason for that is, is if it gave you that much, why didn't it continue? That was telling you that possibility that that was not the bottom, and that has been the case. So instead of making money, you broke even. Well, I'll take a lot of break-even, folks because it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you don't lose. We had two other trades today that didn't work out. We lost uh, 33 pips in the euro, which was a little over $300. And the one that was the most surprising to me is that we bought July hogs. And we were in the July hogs a total of maybe four minutes because it gapped down, stopped, filled us, and then really gapped down down over 300 points. We have not seen a 300-point move down in the hogs in a long time. It was a completed pattern, and it certainly completed us, but we did take a did take a loss in that. But, of course, we were protected a little bit because we were short the stock indices uh, yesterday and then again today, so they acted uh, uh, really nicely. And we had, of course, you know, exited the uh, long bond position and suggested they were going to go a, a lot lower. There was another perfect example of when you get stopped out of a long position, just reverse because it's probably going to go a lot lower. And then the rating service came out and uh, reduced the rating or put a little uh, asterisk on it, maybe caution 
for a treasury bond or treasury notes. I don't know who sits there in those offices and makes, uh, uh, you know, ideas like that go on. I mean, that, that to me is just absolutely insane to think that the U.S. government is not going to pay their bills. The U.S. government has lots of assets, folks. I mean, stop and think of, you know, these giant states that we have like Texas, Alaska, California, and all the stuff that government land that's on New York, I mean, Florida, I mean, there's all kinds of assets that we have. Fort Knox. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. So just because we overspend doesn't mean we, we're not going to pay our bills. And in 116 years, uh, we've raised the debt ceiling, what, 95 times? Well, it's a game they're playing, folks. I don't like that game, but that's the way it's played. So let's uh, move on and talk about uh, one other one. But that uh, the, char the chart in the... Uh, I want to get the Dow Jones up here one more time here today because this was today before we got down to the uh, De Gartley pattern uh, hold on that was completed. You'll see that the rally today uh, when we were moving earlier went right up to this level and then we went down and dropped another several hundred points down to fulfill the Gartley pattern down there at that uh, uh, tw uh, 20, 30, 32,700. So uh, that's had a pretty, pretty big move uh, to the downside. I haven't checked recently, you know, what's been going on, but uh, that's something that we're really watching. We we're really have something in our, in our sites here that we're really excited about. Uh, th another reason, that's another reason why I r raised the stop in the silver back to break even because we still have this potential here. We see this bearish market, the three eight twos all the time in the gold. Now, the ABCDs on these on the, on the daily takes you down to 1905 uh, to 1915. Now that is only 35, uh, yeah, $39 away from where we are right now. So we could very easily uh, be there very quickly. And will this one work? I don't know. All I'm doing is I'm looking at the numbers to see if they're going to line up to give me a place where I can actually get in and not having to risk very much. Just like I'm trying to do in the S&P and the, and the, uh, the hogs. I mean, the hogs lost, lost a penny, you know, 400 bucks. And we lost uh, 350 in the, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the euro. It looked like it was going to hold. It actually did. And then when the news came out of uh, jobs report or whatever it was, boom, then that trade was over. And this was the key here is because when the U.S. dollar index – was sitting there on Tuesday like we were, and this is how that trade got set up. You'll see that we were right here at this number, at, at uh, uh, 63, I believe. I think that's the number, was it? Yeah, 163. 163.08. And then, boom, this thing just took off all the way up here. And that's why you had to stop in, you move to the next one, and that's all you can do. Uh, no, you neither here nor there. You get, just got to stand aside if they're not working. There's another market out there that has been under a great deal of pressure, is holding up relatively well given all the stuff that's going on today. I haven't checked the price uh, uh, since early this morning, but it has been holding the 360 a pound, and that is the copper. Copper setting right here. I don't know what the price is right now, but the, it's right around that 360 level of where the copper is. Let's just see where the copper is, and I can tell you if, in fact, I can. Uh, wow. I don't even I don't even have copper listed on my thing here. Shut the front door and raise the rent. I have to get that put in there. I haven't traded it in so long. Anyway, I'm not looking at it, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. So that's it. Let's move on here to, uh, wow, we got hogs down 300 and 60 points in the July and 200 points in the other. Oh, my goodness. This is really a big day over here in uh, the old meat markets for sure. And uh, let's move on here to the next one here. Um, I, I wish – would someone would someone let me know? I, I'd like to know if, in fact – I'll go into the Tiger chat room. Can someone give me the last price of, uh, of the uh, – of copper, where where is July copper trading? Can someone uh, give me a 10-4 on that? If it's 359 uh, or higher, is all I want to know. If uh, if in fact that's doing it, because if not, I'll get I'll get connected here after the uh, after the break, and I'll put the copper 
uh, into the uh, room to see if we can get that uh, done. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. So anyway, we're going to have Jeff Huge coming up here in just a little bit, and he's been pretty pretty much spot on on this market. By the way, folks, the only person I know that was long NVIDIA, and I don't know a lot of people in stocks, but was Todd Gordon of Trading Analysis. Uh, he was long that stock, and he was uh, – he actually put a video out saying he was looking for prices to go uh, somewhere above 400. And by gosh, they hit 400, uh, 399 today. So I didn't think he thought they were going to do it in one day, but uh, it certainly moved in the right direction. So that's what we're paying attention to here uh, this morning. And when we get back from our break here, which will be coming shortly, we're going to have Jeff Huge of uh, Alpha Insights uh, as our guest, and he'll be joining us at the 2.30 show as well as the 1.30 show. So stay tuned for Jeff Huge, and we'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights uh, on our line today. Jeff, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm great, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show today. It's my pleasure, and I have a question, and someone called me from uh, uh, one of the listeners and was arguing with me about 
what was going on with NVIDIA. And uh, the stock went, uh, it was trading at around two, uh, 290 or something like that, I believe, when the earnings came out. And then it shot up to uh, 394. And he was telling me that there were people selling all the way up. And I said, whoa, I said, wait a minute. I said, the boys on Wall Street are not quite that naive. I think those are bids. In other words, yeah, there'll be a trade in between those things. But to think someone's going to sell every dollar up, uh, am I wrong on that? Or Because I'm not a well, stock trader. Well, for every trader. buyer, there's a seller, right? Uh, you yeah. know, they don't create the stock out of midair. So uh, in some respects, you can't argue with what he has to say. There's somebody selling the stock. But, you know, if you take a look at the volume on this thing, 118 million shares, uh, that is enormous volume uh, for this stock. I mean, for any stock, right? And um, wow. I would say that this is, you know, um, uh, it, it's, it's indicative of something of a blow-off top, okay? The stock is up right now uh, like 27%, uh, just off of its all-time high of uh, 394. Now, you know, I heard some people saying that maybe the stock can go to 500. I don't know. Maybe it can. Um, you know, I think uh, what, what's happening in AI is just, it's a narrative. It's a lot of hype. And yeah. uh, one thing that people should know is that all of NVIDIA's chips are manufactured by TSMC in Taiwan. And all of those fabs are wired for de demolition just in case the Chinese attack. So if the Chinese were to invade Taiwan, they'll blow up all of the, the semiconductor manufacturing fabs, and that's the end of NVIDIA. Could you repeat what you just said to me about, you mean they actually have these things uh, set up on a timer or something in case they get uh, attacked they are, or something? They're they were... already, yeah, they're already wired for demolition. So if, in fact, the Chinese invade, the only reason that they want to invade Taiwan, other than their nationalistic uh, views, is they want access to that semiconductor technology and the production facilities that manufacture over 70 percent of the world's semiconductor production and 90 percent of the world's nanotechnology and high technology advanced AI chips are manufactured in Taiwan by Taiwan Semiconductor. And so those fabs are already, uh, you know, the U.S. Has, has coordinated with them to destroy the fabs and destroy all the intellectual property so that China can't get it. Holy moly, guacamole. That's just absolutely. Hold on, Jeff. I'm getting a call in from my uh, SEAL team unit. Yes, yes, I can be ready at any time. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> yields up and S&P down. What are we looking at here? Well, this is a relationship that's been in, in place for a year and a half or more, uh, going back to at least December of uh, 2021. We've seen a period where that when, you know, 10-year yields have bottomed and are rallying, uh, what happens is the S&P 500 reverses and trends down. Uh, we saw five separate, separate occasions where we saw kind of a cyclical rally in yields and a pullback and, uh, you know, a cyclical decline in stocks. And then, you know, a check back rally and then the same thing over again. Uh, it's actually to the point now where uh, we've seen what appears to be, you know, a technical bottom in 10 year Treasury yield. I see a small degree inverted head and shoulders uh, base formation that is broken out above the neckline and it looks poised to rally to new cycle highs. And my suspicion is that if 10 year Treasury yields rally to new cycle highs, the S&P will sell off aggressively. There's an inverse relationship between the two. That's absolutely for sure. Now, you're also we're having a big move in the U.S. dollar today. We've uh, violated the S and the 61% uh, retracement uh, easily last night, and now we're we're moving uh, up towards the 786. And your chart is suggesting is the dollar goes up, the S&P goes down. Well, that's what's been the loose uh, inverse relation here as well. And we saw since about uh, January of 2022, we saw four occasions where the dollar made these, these separate um, indicative cycle pushes higher, which resulted in the S&P trading lower in kind of a very high correlation factor. We got to that October low. The dollar peaked just ahead of that. And since that time, as the market has been rallying, 
The oh. dollar has been selling off in conjunction again with a very you know close correlation. Uh, we saw the dollar rally back into an interim high as uh, we saw the banks failing and uh, and the equity market selling off into the March lows. And then the opposite has occurred. We've seen a rally back in the dollar and uh, or I'm sorry, a sell off in the dollar and, and a rally back in stocks. And here what we've seen most recently is a rally in the dollar that has broken out above the downtrend. And uh, yeah, that's something yeah, that yields yeah. have yet to do. Yeah. And so uh, since that time, we started to see kind of a, a failing in the S&P, uh, with the exception of those top seven, you know, NASDAQ stocks that are kind of holding uh, the indexes up. The average stock's actually down today. Uh, people are looking yeah. at NVIDIA making new highs and the NASDAQ making a new recovery high. Uh, that is unconfirmed by the Dow or the uh uh, the S and P at this point, and I will tell you that the equal weight S and P is actually down today. Well, uh, Jeff, I've got a I've got a question here. I'm not I'm not questioning your veracity or anything like that. But how is it that you know that the Taiwan uh, TSMC had these things uh, triggered to blow up in case uh, they're uh, attacked by China? Have they announced that, or how do you know that? Uh, it it is public knowledge at this point. But I wrote about it in my last newsletter. I uh, had dinner with uh, a uh, certain professor who's an expert in um, electric vehicle technology who had recently gone to Taiwan uh, to tour uh, the TSMC uh, facilities, and they okay. showed him uh, exactly what was going on. So he, he verified what I had already read about uh, from his firsthand knowledge. So that's how I know about it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, that's why I have Claymore Mines all around my house here. That way I never be bothered by burglars. Uh, I'll tell you, you've got, some of the, you've got some of the most interesting information that, uh, that's out there, so I'm really happy to have you uh, as a guest. Now, the next one we're going to uh, take a look at here is the NASDAQ internal weakness other than <laughs> NVIDIA. <laughs> i tell you, when I saw that uh, chart last night, uh, it was late because I didn't get back until late. I saw that the stock was up 27%, and I said, that's a $300 stock. And I said, I couldn't yeah. – I don't think I've ever seen a, a move that big. Is that is that historically one of the largest moves we, we've seen? Or, or on a price? No. No. I mean, we've seen stocks double in a day. but um, Yeah, but not you know, $300. <laughs> no, well, yeah. In terms of handles, it might be. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I mean, the chart that we're showing here is showing that uh, the Nasdaq Composite itself has been exhibiting uh, internal weakness uh, for some time now. You know, last time I was on your show, I showed a um, a chart of non-confirmations between the Nasdaq 100 and all the broad indexes, right? And and that's an inherently bearish condition when. When you see these um, these negative divergences between the broad market and you know a narrow market like Nasdaq 100, here we're seeing the same thing internally with the cumulative advanced decline line failing to make new highs to confirm the Nasdaq's new high, and and certainly net new highs are also failing to confirm as well. So that internal weakness coupled with that broad intra-market non-confirmation is very bearish. And if you want okay. to be successful at trading, we'll be right back with Jeff Huge Alpha Insights, folks. Stay well, tuned. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and that was then, and this is now. We're showing a chart of the NASDAQ that certainly looks similar. Yeah, you know, Larry, what I decided to do, and I rarely use analogs, but I looked at the, um, uh, the um, actually it says weekly, but it's daily, uh, daily closing data of the um, uh, 2000, uh, I, I, sh I should say it's really the 1998 to August 2000 time frame, or really Jan 99 to August 2000 time frame. Uh, and I compared that to the March 2020 uh, to May 2023 period in the NASDAQ 100 today. So, you know, a look back to the tech bubble and comparing it today. And what we saw was that we had about a 150% advance off the 1998 low into the uh, March 2000 high back in the uh, tech bubble. And from that point, we saw you know, a, a five-wave decline and a 61.8% retracement of that five-wave decline uh, that carried the index from its lows of around 3,000 back to around 4,000 uh, in the NASDAQ. This was back yeah. in that, that tech bubble period. Today, dot com. That was the dot-com, yeah, I remember. The dot-com bubble, right. And so yeah. today we're seeing 150% rally in the NASDAQ off the COVID crisis lows into its wave five cycle peak. So back then it was the wave three cycle peak. Now we hit a higher degree of trend wave five and we dropped in five waves down an impulsive decline. And we've since rallied back in three waves and we've so far retraced a little more than 50%. And we're suggesting at this point that, hey, we don't know whether this thing's going to carry to 61.8%. But what we can tell you is that you know, the recovery is kind of in line with what we saw back during the dot-com crash and the initial recovery. Well, we all know what followed in August of 2000, you know, wave two peaked in the NASDAQ 100, yeah. and then it continued to crash down over 80%. Today, yep, we've seen this 50% recovery. It might carry to a 618 retracement, but that's only, yeah. you know, less than, what, 3.5% from where we're at today. And so, yeah. you know, our suspicion is, you know, nobody should be committing new capital for three and a half percent, especially when we think we're facing the next wave down, which will be wave three down. And it could be an epic collapse. We think, you know, yeah. the plunge uh, in the NASDAQ going forward is, is the real uh, trade. And, and that trade is one where you want to avoid being long at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really if you're, can... you're going to be wrong. I can remember the dot-com bubble because of the fact that the, these companies would have uh, you know, their sales force. And if, this, if the phone rang, 
the stock would jump 20 percent they didn't even have to answer the phone i mean it was it was incredible i mean i i never seen well i always said i said they'll never see anything like that in my lifetime and up until today with nvidia we really haven't so it's still a little bit of a little bit of a mystery to me now the next one we want to uh be talking about i'll get this up here i really enjoy your charts by the way jeff you do a a really super job Okay, now this is uh, this is the the setup that we're looking at in the S and P. Yeah, and um, you know we showed this chart before, but we did uh, update our count a little bit here, and that's just simply because you know we took out that February high ever so slightly. We've yet to close above that February high, but but the simple fact that price on an intraday basis made a new recovery high moves us to our top alternate, uh, which is that we're in a double zigzag rather than a single zigzag. Uh, recovery trade. And so, you know, we now are looking at the October low as being the bottom of primary wave one down and the recovery into now the uh, May 19th high is um, is primary wave two's top in a double zigzag. Now, we do leave a little bit of room for additional upside. There's a Montgomery cycle window that carries till about uh, June 3rd. And it's possible if things get a little crazy that maybe the market decides it wants to carry all the way to the 61.8% retracement. Uh, that comes in at about 43.12. It's also possible that this gap resistance, you know, may contain the advance, even if we make another push up uh, to make a slight new high. But it doesn't really matter. The next big move directionally is to the downside. And once we break below 4,039 on the S&P, it will confirm that primary wave three down is operative, and we expect that to carry uh, prices in the index down to a minimum of S&P 2750, uh, which is a, you know, orders of magnitude lower, basically. So um, it is an extremely bearish setup. We've talked about this a number of times, and, you know, the advice to your listeners is simply this, um, you know, be patient, minimize net equity exposure, maximize cash reserves right now, uh, because the best thing you can do is collect five and a half percent in treasury bills or five and a quarter percent to avoid taking these risks. I heard uh, today on um, Bloomberg that the uh, the I think it was the one week bills were at eight percent, seven point nine nine percent T bills uh, for the yeah for the that's short right. Terms. I just heard they did a big auction on uh, one month bills. Uh, I think or maybe they were twenty one day, and that was six and a half percent yesterday. So yeah, there uh, wow. there's definitely some concern about the debt default, and and I don't really think yeah. that's going to be legitimate. But take yeah, advantage I, I, of it. Yeah, I don't understand how anybody could think that the government would. I mean, I can understand they might go be late in making payments. Uh, heck, I'm that way every month. But, well, not quite. But anyway, the thing that you got to remember is in 116 years, we've increased the the, the uh, debt uh, 95 times. Uh, and so you know, that's not unusual, but they don't realize that there's a lot of assets that the that the United States has that, you know, it's, we still have, you know, their gold on the books is at $32 an ounce, you know, so yeah. and that's not counting the, the stuff in Alaska and California and all these great states, but they're spending it too fast, I think. So that's it. Listen, would you be able to uh, join us on the 1230 show? I mean, I love these charts and I know that people would like to uh, that miss the show today. We'll catch it at the next break at the at the, in an hour. Would you be able to come back and join us then? Uh, I will. And I just want to mention that, uh, you know, we will be publishing issue number 22 of Huge Insights, the Big Picture on Saturday, June 3rd. So if you haven't signed up to uh, to our newsletter subscription, uh, please consider doing that at hugeinsights.substack.com. It's worth every penny. I think it's, what, $12 a month or something like that? I mean, it's so... Yeah, we've got a free version where you get the first four four pages of the newsletter for free. But if you want the full Monty, uh, we publish a 20-page paper that's got about 25 to 30 very informative charts and our full market forecast and positioning recommendations. And, and honestly, paid subscribers get a lot of extra perks. They get a, a weekly subscription to our uh, Idea Generator Lab publication which details our top actional trade idea every Wednesday, as well as updated market commentary. And we also do some, you know, periodic special reports and quarterly video content uh, that we provide to our uh, paid subscribers as well. So we think there's a lot of value there. And, you know, we're, we're here to help. We'd like to get as many people on 
uh, our uh, subscription run as possible because we think what we have to say is important and uh, we want to uh, you know, help people preserve capital and profit during this uh, next leg of the bear market down. Well, your charts certainly help explain it. Listen, thanks for joining us, Jeff, and we'll see you again at 2.30. Jeff Huge of Alpha Sounds Insights, right. folks. We'll be right back. Thank you. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the, uh, the chart of the um, E-mini NASDAQ showing you that the uh, the, on this 15-minute chart that we have some resistance here at 14,000. So far, the high has been 14,004. Uh, just checked it a minute ago, and it was trading at 13,999. So it's up into this ballpark somewhere very similar to what we're looking at. I am still concerned about this movement that we've seen in, in video. I'm going to find out from a specialist at the NASDAQ uh, how that works because uh, that doesn't make any sense when the stock jumps like that. In the commodity markets, what happens is the bids come out and people are bidding for it and it's showing they're bidding, bidding, bidding and the prices are going half, but there are no offers out there. No one's selling it. 
That's why the bids keep going up, but there's no selling. And I think that's what happens. Why would anybody be dumb enough to sell? Get off the soapbox, Larry, and get on to the next one. Let's show you how what wonderful things stop losses are for, folks. This is the one that I absolutely loved the most of anything today, and that was in our hogs. We've been waiting to get filled for three days, and I'm going to get this up here to let you show why you use stops and why that will keep you in the promised land. Look at our beautiful 1.618 here at 79.10. Folks, the number of minutes that we were in between 79.10 and 78.10 can be counted in less than five five minutes, I believe, is the the amount of time we were in it. I saw the the uh, the, the the fill come in, and I was it couldn't have been more than five minutes when the when the stop was hit, and I said, uh oh. And now hogs are down fifteen uh, uh, fifteen hundred dollars today, folks. And hogs, that's a huge break. I mean, they must be giving uh, pork away over in China because nobody's buying it here. That's for sure. So let's take a break here. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. 